And good morning. Welcome to Community Voice. Today is Tuesday, February 7th. I'm your host, Josh Engel. Today we have Terry Lowry, the uh, well, a composer, a musician, and the uh, conductor of the Carol Symphony Orchestra, uh, joins us in the studio today so we can chat about their upcoming uh, CSO Masterworks Winter Concert happening on February 9th at the Carrollton Center for the Arts. But uh, let's let the professional talk about that. Oh, we're also live streaming on our WLBB Facebook page. So if you have any questions or comments for our guest, feel free to type those in. I'd be honored to read them. Uh, Terry, good morning, sir. How are you? Morning, Josh. I'm great, man. How are you? Uh, it's a, uh, Very well. Thank you again for coming in uh, today to talk about this exciting concert. Absolutely. It's something that's been in the work now, uh, works now for a, quite a while. Um, could you tell us a bit about, um, for folks who may not be aware, tell us a bit about yourself, uh, about your history in Acumen, as well as uh, a bit about the symphony. Well, the Carroll Symphony, um, we're celebrating our 20th year this year, so um, it's an exciting time. Our very first concert was on October the 19th in 2002, and so the 2022-2023 uh, the season is our uh, celebratory season for our 20th anniversary, so we're really excited over the over those years we've presented um over 300 concerts um 600 concerts if you factor in all that the uh Carrollton wind ensemble Carrollton jazz orchestra um, atlanta by six all, all the different groups that that are part of of what we do um so it's been a, a fantastic fantastic 20 years we've premiered over uh, 250 original compositions written just for us. No other orchestra in America can come close to that. Um, and and a lot of those have been by student uh, composers. We have a statewide young composer competition. And through that, we've premiered, I don't know, 150, 160 uh, new compositions by students K through 12. We're going to play three of those pieces this Thursday. So we've got a fantastic concert this Thursday that means a lot to me personally. Um, we're going to start off with a concert opener by an L.A. composer named Corey Field. And Corey's actually flying out, uh, flying in from L.A. Um, for this concert. He's going to be at a student concert that we're doing Thursday morning, going to speak to the kids, be on stage, let them see what it's like to have a, a real live, you know, living, breathing composer uh, in their presence, and they'll get to ask him questions. And we'll have a great time with Corey. And then we're going to play three of our winning compositions from our most recent young composer competition and two of those winners of the statewide event are from Bremen Tyson Washington and Ada Lynn Key are from Bremen and they've written just wonderful music so we're going to play their pieces in this concert but then we're going to round it out with Beethoven's Third Symphony Beethoven's Third Symphony recently Gramophone Magazine uh, did a poll of all their um subscribers all over the world you know their favorite pieces of music and they made a list you know top 10 top 20 whatever and number one on the list greatest piece of music of all time according to music lovers around the world is beethoven's third symphony beethoven's third <clears throat> symphony yeah. so uh folks are are very aware of his or usually very aware the fifth of his symphony, fifth the ninth symphony, symphony the 12th and symphony they look at me, what do you mean the third symphony so let's talk about what what makes <clears throat> uh what makes the third symphony so unique well i can do that man i've been doing that in schools uh, all over our area for the past several weeks i'll do it four times today at central high school when i leave here and when i tell this story to children to, to students their eyes just get wide you know it's just it's this fantastic story so beethoven was born in 1770 died in 1827 so it's it's what we would think of as the revolutionary period right it's he's a contemporary of a little younger, but lived at the same time as George Washington and Alexander Hamilton and Thomas Jefferson and these guys. So at that time, the the big event in Europe was Napoleon and all that Napoleon was doing. So he had taken over after the terror in France after the, um, the French Revolution. And, you know, this guy from humble beginnings, a little short guy, uh, worked his way up to being the head of the French army and eventually the head of all of France. And when he became the head of all of France, he basically said, you know, freedom and liberty for all. You know, and everybody loved that idea. And, and there were people all over Europe that were like, yes, let's topple the, the monarchs. Let's get rid of tyranny and let the people have their freedom, much in the same way that we had done here in America. So Napoleon started to do that. And he goes from country to country, uh, defeating the, the monarchs and their armies, 
people thinking that he's freeing Europe. Beethoven is so excited about this. Beethoven thinks, I want to write a piece of music about this great man, about Napoleon. Beethoven saw a little bit of himself in Napoleon. He, he was a, a commoner, but by virtue of his talents and extraordinary ability, he felt like he was on par with the nobility. Uh, there's this great story that um, Beethoven and Goethe were walking down the street. The, uh, uh, Goethe, the, the great German writer and, and scientist, uh, the Faust, you know, is his big work that we all know. So Beethoven and Goethe were good friends. They were walking through the streets of Vienna, and here comes this prince with, you know, I don't know, 20, 30, you know, courtiers and, you know, bodyguards and whatever. And everybody's just falling all over themselves to bow and just to grovel in front of this prince. And, and you know, Goethe bows all the way down almost to the ground, and Beethoven looks and just walks on by. Goethe runs up to Beethoven. What are you doing? What are you doing? They'll throw you in jail. Why, why didn't you bow to the prince? Beethoven looked at him and said, there are a thousand princes. There's only one Beethoven. <laughs> So Beethoven felt like he was on par with anyone because yeah. of his talent. You know, he, he envisioned this world where, you know, your your abilities and, and your merits um, allowed you to, to climb, you know, whatever social structure there was, which is exactly what Washington and Jefferson and Hamilton and Franklin, that's exactly what they were saying. Ordinary right? men with great destinies. That, that you can change your futures. You're not just born into it. And for us, we, uh, you know, we take that for granted at this point, but... But back in the day, uh, you know, that long ago, um, there was a really radical idea. So Beethoven really bought into the idea of Napoleon. So he thought, well, if anybody's going to write a piece of music about Napoleon, it should be me because I've got so much in common with him. You know, so he it's almost a autobiographical piece. He, he lets us in to, in the four different movements of the symphony. They're like little studies of the different sides of Napoleon's personality or Beethoven's personality or of our personality. Mm. So uh, they do the first rehearsal, and it, it shocks everybody. No one's ever heard a piece of music this long. No one's ever played a piece of music this difficult. There are things in the music transitions, abrupt transitions, key changes, all kind of things that no one had ever heard before. It was really radical. And you got to think of composers back then. Don't think of them as musicians. For uh, it, In our time, it's better to think, when you think about Beethoven and Mozart and Haydn and Wagner and Mahler and these guys back then, Think of like Steven Spielberg. Think of Ron Howard. Think of big movie makers because that's what they were. The composers were in their time. Okay, they were creating the thing and the buzz that that we give to movie makers. You know, and so if a big Steven Spielberg movie comes out, everybody goes to see it, right? You rent it, you watch it, you buy it. It's the cornerstone of uh, yeah. modern civilization. That, exactly. That's our, our art form. And even when, when Spielberg's making a movie, there are articles written about the making of it before it even comes out. Well, that was happening with Beethoven. Look who, look who got cast in the new film. Exactly. In this case, it'd be, look who's going to be playing cello. Exactly. That's exactly how it happened in all the newspapers. So it's really more instructive to think of these composers back then the way that we think of our modern movie makers. So anyway, um, I think it also says a lot about the challenge put to the composer, because if this is the primary media that's sure. being ingested by the people, it's I mean, the national they, art form for Germany and Austria at the time in the way that cinema is ours, you know, um, uh, painting may be for France, um, playwriting for England, ballet for Russia, you know, every you know, opera for Italy, sure. uh, instrumental music, um, wow. symphonies. It's their Raiders of the Lost Ark, you know, yeah. this great experience. So it had to be complex and tell. Well, so Beethoven's inventing a brand, imagine someone inventing a brand new kind of movie that you've never seen before, a brand new form, a brand new genre that no one had ever seen. Wow. It's bigger, it's longer, it's more, it sucks you in. It's just, it's, anyway, that was the Eroica Symphony. So when he finds out that, after the first rehearsal that Napoleon had changed course and made himself emperor and become the tyrant that everyone thought he was going to overthrow, Beethoven was, as you can, to put it lightly, disappointed. He took out a knife and scratched out Napoleon's name, ripped a hole in the music. He was so angry and changed the name of it to the Heroic Symphony, a symphony in honor See, it's a symphony written to the memory of a great man. Oh, that's so tragic. So, so you know, who it's about, you know, I, 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 when I talk to students, you know, I, I share with them that we all have different sides to our personality. And, you know, some, you know, some days you may feel a certain way. And like for me, I, I, I love being in front of people. I love uh, playing music in front of people, I love talking about music in front of people. But I also love spending time absolutely by myself playing the piano and writing music. 
I love both of those things. They're very, very different, but yet they're both authentically part of who I am. So when you hear this music and you hear these contrasts, they're, they're different sides of the personality. And, and when you talk to children about this and you tell them and you ask them, do you have different sides of your personality? Do you have different things about you? Can you hear some of yourself in this music? And they do. And it, um, it's just an amazing thing to watch their faces when they're listening to this. And I, you know, when I was a kid, I grew up in a couple of really small towns. I didn't have an orchestra. We didn't, we didn't have, we couldn't go to the Carol Smith. There was none of that existed. And, um, I had never heard an orchestra live until I was 12 years old. And we were in Daytona beach and we, I looked up on a billboard and saw that the London symphony orchestra was in town that day. Wow. So I started beating on the back of my dad's car seat. You got to buy tickets. Gavin. So he did. He bought two tickets and he took me, we were in shorts and, tank tops everybody else was in tuxedos and evening gowns and it was the london symphony orchestra the the group that had played on the movies star wars and superman and et john williams yes john williams group right for all of the movies michael tilson thomas was the conductor and you know what they played beethoven's Beethoven's third Third symphony Symphony. changed my life we need to go ahead and take our first commercial break but uh, we're going to keep this train rolling when we come back and uh, continue our conversation uh, with terry lowry conductor of the carrollton symphony orchestra we discuss the upcoming masterworks winter concert stay with us health is a journey it's making better choices even when it's not easy it's taking care of yourself and the people you love At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org. As a believer in the power of education, we are called to set the standard by shaping and empowering the minds of future generations through quality education. Oak Mountain Academy embraces this philosophy, which is why my children attend this prestigious school. I am elated to serve on the OMA Board of Trustees, where together we prepare students and remind them to trust and believe in the power to transform the world. I'm Dr. Brian Bain, inviting you to celebrate our 60-year legacy of academic excellence. Visit us at oakmountain.us. And we're back to Community Voice. We are live streaming on our WLBB Facebook page. So if you have any questions for our guest, Terry Lowry, conductor of the Carol Symphony Orchestra, as we discuss the uh, Masterworks Winter Concert, feel free to type those in and I could read them out to them. Uh, today's Tuesday, February 7th. I am your host, Josh Engel. If you're just tuning in, we are chatting about Beethoven's Third Symphony, and I'd like to keep this conversation rolling exactly where we were. So uh, if you're just tuning in, uh, we're talking about the concert. It's going to be happening February 9th, this Thursday, at the Carrollton Center for the Arts. No, no. No, no, no. Oh, sorry. I'm <laughs> oh, I wrote the wrong thing then. <laughs> the Carroll County Schools Performing Arts Center. That's where we're going to be. Yes, yep. yes. It's yep. just, so it is kind of confusing because the concert is at the Carroll County Schools Performing Arts Center. However, the Carrollton Center for the Arts downtown handles the box office. So if you want tickets. They sell the tickets. I know that's confusing. I'm sorry. But it's an opportunity, it for, a, it yeah. it's an opportunity for, a, for audience members to get to uh, check out both of our amazing Oh, absolutely. Venues. So we, you know, so obviously we perform a lot in the Carrollton Center for the Arts. Uh, the Carrollton Jazz Orchestra plays there. The Carrollton Wind Ensemble plays there. Lots, um, lots happen there. We, we, the Carroll Symphony rehearses there. But the symphony concert will happen at the Carroll County Schools Performing Arts Center at 7.30 on Thursday, this Thursday, February 9th. What an incredible venue. The acoustics, the sound in the, in the yeah. Carroll County Performing Arts Center. And they nailed it. Robert Carter and the guys that, that were behind that building. Oh, my gosh. It is fantastic. It's such Just a great fantastic. job. A perfect venue to uh, to perform Beethoven's Third Symphony. Absolutely. If you're just tuning in, please go back and check out the full story. I had no idea uh, that Napoleon said, played such a pivotal role in the composition. It was originally of that called piece. the Bonaparte Symphony. Wow. That was its original name. Struck out with a knife. Yep, ripped a hole in the page. Incredible. So we were just uh, we were just chatting about how when you were a young boy, you and your dad uh, had the serendipitous opportunity to see the London. Yeah, the uh, first time I heard an orchestra live. The first time I ever heard. An orchestra was the London Symphony Orchestra playing Beethoven's Third Symphony. What did that mean to you? As well, here I am. Here you are. Oh, and there you go. So many original compositions. Uh, uh, I'd also, uh, shortly, I'd love to get uh, chat a bit more about your young composer competition and how that has impacted this show. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, uh, so 
Well, and that's another thing. You know, the the way that it's kind of funny. The the symphony board, the board of directors of the Carroll Symphony, is so supportive of of what we do. They've they've always kind of they. <laughs> I don't know. They indulge me a little bit, and they 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 allow me to dream up some of these programs, like the Young Composer Competition, by thinking, okay, what do I wish I had had when I was a kid? What you know, if if being this kid in Adel, Georgia, being this kid in Bowden, Georgia, what if I could have met somebody who could have like said, you know, you could do this when you grow up, or here's how you do this, or hey, write something, we'll play it, let you hear what it sounds like. Let me you know, let us show you what a cello can actually do let us show you what a harp can do if, if i'd had those opportunities you know they just just kind of imagine the trajectory of your life and so when we plan programs education outreach programs uh concert programs all the way down to what time do we start we start at 7 30 why do we start at 7 30 so that kids can come to the concert and get home in bed for school the next that's day awesome. that's why we do it um, so we think, what do I wish I'd had? And what do I wish I'd had? I wish I'd had a chance to hear my music played by an orchestra when I was a kid. So we've done that over 160 times over the past 20 years for little kids. And kids we're do right here Thursday. in our community. Yeah. Yeah. And to have their music performed by a full symphony. Look, I mean, I, I, there's, there's so many stories that I could tell um, about this. I mean, people who, who kids who came from, all different types of backgrounds and upbringings and, and different challenges that they had to go through as children who then went on to win huge scholarships at prestigious music schools and are now professional musicians. And the Young Composer Competition played a huge part in that, if not the main part in that. Um, there was a, in, in one of our very first years, um, we were playing, and, and I had uh, a little girl come up and stand next to me, the, the composer. She was maybe eight years old. She was wearing what I call a little princess dress, you know, just yeah. ruffles and bows ever. She's standing right next to me. I'm conducting the orchestra, and we play her piece in rehearsal, first time ever. And when we finish, 60 Juilliard-trained musicians start applauding her. And I turn around, and I look at her parents. They're in the audience just ball in their of eyes course. now you know and of then a, another uh, the very actually the very first edition of the young pros competition we were playing a student concert at the old Carrollton high school auditorium but before they tore it down and built the mac and i was getting ready to go out on stage there were like 700 seven, seventh graders in the audience and i looked out and i saw that one of our current winners was in the audience i turned to my concert master edward eanes and i said you know we're going to play her piece in a couple weeks Let's go ahead and pull it out and play it today. Because they had the players had the music with them. I said, so I'm going to pull a Peyton Manning. We're going to call an audible right here in the middle yeah. of the on the field. So I told the concert master to let the orchestra know that at some point we're going to pull her piece. And so we went out. We did some things like Peter and the Wolf and and that kind of thing. And then we, uh, I turned to the audience and I told them what we're about to do. That we're about to play a piece of music written by one of your peers. In fact, she's here today. <laughs> Wow. We played her piece of music, and as soon as it was over, 700 seventh graders jumped to their feet, clapping. Now, I was never a 13-year-old girl, but I'm going to imagine that that does a lot for the self-esteem of a 13-year-old girl. And it can, that, in, a, in a, a moment like that can change your life. And we, we've done that for 20 years. Forever change the course of your life into something so fulfilling, so meaningful, that something that seemed out of reach. But here you have 700 people. You have 61 Juilliard graduates clapping, applauding you for something you, that you were brave enough to do. Put yourself out there. Put your art out there. Yeah, and, and they learn at an early age that this is, this is your life. It, it, it changes their outlook, you know? It expands I mean, from, their world. From then on, they think, well, heck, I guess I can do anything. It's hard for people not to have small apertures. You know, they get comfortable in their routine. And well, they, they get told what they can't do, you know, to, you know, you're from a small town, you're, you know, a rural area. This is, you know, we're in Georgia, we're in the South, you know, whatever, you know, blah, 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 blah. When we started this, it was only open to students in Carroll County. You could live in New York City and not have this opportunity. You, well, because it's a statewide company, you can still live in New York and not have this opportunity. It's the only program like it in the world where a, where a 10-year-old can, can submit a piece of music and have a professional symphony play it. It's incredible. And so we'll do we'll do three of those on Thursday night at seven thirty. 
Uh, we're going to go and take our second commercial break. And when we come back, we will wrap up our conversation with Terry Lowry, a conductor of the Carol Symphony Orchestra, as we discuss the upcoming's Masterworks Winter Concert this Thursday, 730 at the Carroll County Performing Arts Center. Stay with us. Health is a journey. It's making better choices, even when it's not easy. It's taking care of yourself and the people you love. At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org. I'm Michael Flynn, Oak Mountain Academy, class of 1978. Katie Flynn, class of 2010. Justin Flynn, class of 2014. Logan Flynn, class of 2019. And I'm Marnie Flynn, current teacher at OMA. My uncle Richard Orm Flynn, a founding father of Oak Mountain Academy, had a vision to see students become confident leaders who hold a faith-based value system in an academically rigorous environment. We are proud to celebrate 60 years of fulfilling my uncle's vision. Our family invites you to visit the campus or oakmountain.us today. Tuesday, February 7th, you're listening to Community Voice. I'm your host, Josh Engel. If you're just tuning in, be sure to go back and check out this full episode uh, with Terry Lowry, conductor of the Carroll Symphony Orchestra, as we discuss the upcoming Masterworks Winter Concert. Uh, you can check out the podcast of this episode, which will be uploaded to the station's website, as well as gratitcommunications.com, or you can check out the live stream currently going on on our WLBB Facebook page. So if you have any last-minute questions or comments for our guests, feel free to, uh, to type those in. So, um, Terry, I wanted to, uh, I know that we've, uh, we've had an opportunity to chat about some of the pieces, about some of the young composers whose uh, music will be included. Are there other elements, uh, particularly any specific musicians or other pieces that uh, you would like to highlight? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Corey Field, uh, this wonderful composer from Los Angeles, is flying in to do uh, his Laurel Canyon. We're doing his Laurel Canyon Overture, which was originally a movement from his fourth symphony. He pulled it out uh, and published it uh, a second time as a standalone piece, and it works great for us um, as a concert opener. It's really exciting. It's got an unbelievable percussion part in the middle, and um, it's so great that we're going to do a. St- I'm, I'm, I've built a student concert around it that we're going to do Thursday morning. So we'll play when the kids. We'll have a room full of students from four year olds, you know, all the way up, and we'll start with we'll play the third movement of Beethoven's third symphony and then we'll do the laurel canyon overture and i'll bring Corey up onto the stage we'll do it once we'll have him talk and talk about different parts of the music then we'll sample just a few measures at a time let the kids really get a feel for it then we'll play it again and they'll hear it in a brand new way all the pieces yeah yeah yeah. Put yeah, yeah yeah right they'll hear it in a brand new way and there's a real live living composer they're not all dead in a cemetery in vienna <laughs> they're right there and then we'll play one of the young composer pieces so they hear what it's like to have a to hear a 10 year old kid's piece Right after that, and then we'll close with the finale of the Eroica Symphony. So that's our, we do that kind of thing for the students. We always, the the number one, ask the, the number one point in our mission statement is to enrich the lives of children. So everything that we do has to pass that test. So we do all of that. I do programs in schools. I've been doing them in schools for the past month. I'll do four today where we just go talk about this music, you know, and have the kids get excited, and then they'll get excited and they'll come to the concert. And then Thursday night's just, uh, you know, the whole show feels almost like an encore because this has been going on for so long. You know, the build up to it, um, all the work that we do in the schools, prepping the students, uh, the young composer competition, working on the music, doing the student concerts, all of this kind of leads up to what we do on Thursday night for the public. But for us, that's kind of. You know, all the work's done by then. We're just having fun. At this point, it's just about, you know, you've already, you've rehearsed, you've rehearsed. You know this music intimately. All the musicians do. Well, I will tell you, that's that's an interesting thing, right? So last year we did Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, and the year before that we did the Seventh Symphony. I'm kind of doing this little four-year thing. Next year we're going to do the Sixth, and then after that we'll think of something new. But when you approach these pieces of music like the Seventh Symphony or the Fifth Symphony, I really felt like I, I, I know this stuff. I've got it. You know, I could teach this to anybody. I know every single note. So I'm working on this Third Symphony. Every single time I pick it up, I find something new. And I go, oh my gosh, I'm never going to know this thing. 
I, it's I, changing. I, I it's could like, play this thing for the rest of my life, and I'm never going to know this whole thing. That's how amazing this particular piece of music is. Clearly a, a testament to how moved uh, Beethoven was, was both before the uh, his falling out with the image of Napoleon and 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 afterwards yeah. i mean oh it changed it changed the look the fact that we go to concerts now is because of this piece of music before this piece of music all all music was written for some other purpose right is it church music it was it was uh, for a coronation it was it was for some other ceremony or it was, it was dancing music or it was a divertimento it was a symphony written by haydn to be played uh, at the Esterhazy palace after dinner you know it was after dinner music they all, it all, there was a reason why the music was written you know something was already happening let's write some music to make it better whether it's a mass or a requiem or whatever let's write some music just to make it better the eroica is the first time that we've got music and the music is the reason you show up to hear this music not because you were already coming for something else for this music and it changed the course of music history forever music was never the same again Incredible, and we're right here at the uh, the cusp of Valentine's Day weekend. Oh, if yeah! What a looking, better date! What a better date night to go yeah. see vibrant, ever changing, living music. music. Gorgeous music. I mean, impact, iconic music that has changed the the landscape of composition forever. You can take your special loved one, uh, or maybe someone you're hoping to be a special loved one, mm-hmm. and uh, and go enjoy this program. Yeah. I mean, and get to take this in. Yeah. So, um, I did want to ask. Uh, I know that we mentioned. Uh, well, firstly, are there any uh, sponsors or are there any uh, oh, yeah, mem- sure. that you would like to uh, Well, to you know, we always want to, to, to thank the people that make it happen. If you, if you go to mycarolsymphony.com uh, to our website and go, click on CSO Patrons, uh, you'll see a huge list of our supporters. You know, And it starts right at the top with, with um, uh, the city of Carrollton and the Carrollton Center for the Arts in Carroll County, the Community Foundation of West Georgia, the Brian and Mahala Bain Foundation, Ridley Teal Properties, Southwire, Tanner Health System, the Warren and Ava Sewell Foundation, uh, 316 Healthcare, and on and on and on. You'll see well over 100 names on that list. Our, our guild is huge. Um, the support that we've had for over the past 20 years is just unbelievable. And I'm, I'm very I'm proud of that. I'm proud of how our community embraces what we do and what we do in the lives of children. And that being such a predominant it's the spine. It's the backbone of of the work that the CSO is doing. Yeah, right. I, I, inspiring and and giving confidence and worth to children yep. in our community that have everything they need yeah. to explore this world. And in many cases, as you've seen, and help facilitate, become successful That's in this right. world. Absolutely. Um, we only have a couple of minutes left, so I was hoping perhaps we could chat. Uh, actually, we only have about one minute left. Uh, one more time, this concert is Feb- this Thursday, February 9th at 7.30. 7.30, so the kids can come see it. That's right. The, the Carol Symphony Orchestra Masterworks Winter Concert. How can folks get tickets? Okay, so you can visit carrolltonarts.org. You can stop by the Carrollton Center for the Arts, which is the Art Center downtown. Pick up your tickets to the box office there. You can call 770-838-1083. Tickets are $18 for adults. They're $10 for students. And uh, I really do encourage you to bring your family. My children will be there. My, my five-month-old baby will be there. So uh, bring the family. The very first concert, you know, it's funny. I've got a 20-year-old daughter. I've got a five-month-old baby. At the very first Carol Symphony concert, my 20-year-old daughter was there. She was six months old. So, yeah. And now my later. five-month-old is going to be, at this one, 20 years later. So bring the entire family. They'll love this music. I've been playing it for kids all over the county for the past month. They will love this music. Terry, it's always a pleasure. I always learn something whenever we chat. Thank Thanks. you so much for coming on the program. Thank you. And to all of you tuning in at home, we'll see you next time.